Hello everyone, today I would like to introduce you to the Pegasus user interface for configuring your flight controllers. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get Pegasus is to go download it. I'll have uh, the links for downloading it in the description below this video. There are two different places you can go to get it. Um, this first place you can go to is the Helio RC's uh, GitHub repository. And here you can see that Ornery D released this version nine days ago, uh, public beta 0.1.1.1. But there's often more recent versions as it's uh, actively in development right now. You can go to this uh, Google Drive location and download a more recent version where he uploaded version 0.1.1.2 uh, a couple days ago. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to download, because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to download the DMG file. All right, now that I've got that DMG file downloaded, oops, let's go to the downloads and open it. And let me stick Pegasus from Helio into my applications folder. Oh, I am not an administrator. Let's go open my applications folder and find Pegasus and run it. And it's from an unknown developer. Let me hit uh, control, right click, and hit open. Yes, I really want to open it anyway. And put in my admin password again. Now you can see the Pegasus user interface. All right, so now that you've got Pegasus up and running and looking for a flight controller, you need to plug it in so it can automatically detect it. So here I am, I'm just plugging in my quad now and see if Pegasus will detect it. It noticed that something's there, but it's gonna just sit here and now it knows it's there. Well, that's not what I expected to happen at all. I really expected it to get stuck and not know how to do that. Okay, at this point, I'm a little bit surprised that it just worked because when I did this on a previous computer in the past, it would get stuck at the spinning circle. And I discovered on that computer that I needed to download some USB drivers to make it work. So I was really hoping this computer would show you that problem and I would go through the steps to show you how to fix it. But since this computer did not do that, uh, either this latest version of the Pegasus UI fixed that problem, or there's something I installed in this computer in the past which is causing it to work. But let's say you connect your flight controller and you get stuck in that spinning wheel where it can't detect it. I would suggest you go back to the Pegasus GitHub page and go to this main Pegasus UI page and you read the instructions on here where it says if you're on Mac OS, the first thing you need to do is brew install libusb. And you would run this command from a terminal, but if you uh, don't know what this is and you don't have brew already installed on your Mac for development and other cool things, then uh, I would say you should go get that first. So to do that, I would go and uh, forget the URL for that. It's the homebrew website, so brew.sh, and it tells you right here how to install homebrew. Really what you need to do is copy this command, go to a terminal window. All right, so open a terminal as an administrator, and then you're going to want to run that command, and it will install it. Enter. All right, while that's busy downloading and installing stuff, let's take a look at that GitHub page again. Now, if you're in Windows and you have a similar problem, I'd say you probably need to follow these instructions on here to get the right drivers installed. If you've tried everything on this page and you still can't get your flight controller to get recognized by the Pegasus user interface, then I would suggest you head over to the Helio Discord channel and ask for some help there.
So recently Helio switched from using their Slack channel to Discord and they're slowly moving everybody and all their help files over here. So I would go over here, here's the Discord channel, and I'll try to post a link to that too. Uh, hopefully they've got it on their website now as well. And you can go into the Pegasus UI, Helio support, and ask your question and hopefully somebody will be able to help you out. Okay, so as I'm checking on this, it looks like 10 minutes ago they uploaded a new build for testing. And it posted the link right here. And do you know that that is correct? There is a brand new upload posted just now. This was the page I loaded earlier showing that it was last modified October 30th. Pegasus 112.dmg. And right here you can see that he uploaded a new version of that while I was recording this video. So that just goes to show how much updates are going into this. Like he's updating it pretty regularly. So you should always want, if you want the latest, you should come to this Google Drive location and check it out. And it looks like my terminal is done. So now it looks like I've got Brew installed. So according to their instructions, the next thing I want to do is use Brew to install libusb. So I would copy this, go back to my terminal window, paste it, and then Brew's going to go download and install that USB library, and you should be all good. Oh, looks like I've got an error, because I already must have installed this on this computer a long, long time ago which is probably why it just worked for me. Cool. All right, now I'm gonna go in back into Pegasus here. I'm going to quit Pegasus and download the more. All right, let's download this Pegasus UI again. Okay, now that I've got that downloaded, oops, not my documents folder. Let's open this file here. And let's get my applications folder again. Replace it with the newer version. Open the applications folder, find Pegasus. And run it. I've already got my flight controller plugged in to my USB port, so it should automatically detect it. Yes, I want to open it even though I downloaded it from the internet. And I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit different all of a sudden. I switched to using a different microphone because the internal microphone on my laptop was picking up a lot of fan noise as the computer was heating up. So I'm going to try using this microphone instead. Hopefully it sounds just fine. And I don't know why my screen went dim. That's really weird. All right, I'm going to go over here and check, see if there's any more discussion about that latest version. No, I don't see anything interesting there. Let's go back to Pegasus. Okay, now you can see that I've got Pegasus up and running, and it's talking to my flight controller. If I wiggle my quad around, it can see that everything is good, it can talk to it. Okay, so what I just realized while I was recording this video is that a lot of you will not have the right firmware installed on your flight controller that Pegasus will automatically detect it and run the way you want it to. I believe you have to have like Butterflight 3.6 or something really new like that. So if you've got Betaflight, an older version of Betaflight or an older version of Butterflight on your flight controller, it won't auto detect it. And I'm gonna show you now what that looks like, plug in my flight controller here, and then let me go back and start up Pegasus again. So I reflashed my flight controller with Butterflight 351, so a fairly old version, and now when you plug it in, it boots up like this, and it just tells you that you have an incompatible device. There be dragons ahead. So it's not really an incompatible device, it just has a firmware on it that Pegasus doesn't know what to do with. So what I thought would happen here is we could go into the command line 
and type BL to get into bootloader mode, but that doesn't appear to be working for me. That might work for some people, but Pegasus seems to be stuck and it can't talk to my flight controller. So I'm going to quit Pegasus and I'm going to fire up Butterflight and I'm going to select my USB port controller and I'm going to go to the CLI and type in version just to see that I'm running Butterflight 3.51 and I'm going to type BL to tell it to go into bootloader mode and then I'm going to quit Butterflight start that up and now it detects that my flight controller is ready to be flashed with new firmware and if you want you could install RaceFlight maybe I'll make a new video later to show you how to install RaceFlight but today I want to install Butterflight, and I'm going to select my Helio Spring as the target, and I'm going to choose the latest version of Race Flight, apparently. No. Oh, what if I say I want to choose Beta Flight instead for my Helio Spring? It still says I want to install Race Flight. So I might have to uh, let them know that that's not quite how it's supposed to work. All right, maybe I'm going to go over to here, go into the Pegasus UI, and mention something. All right, well, there's a great example of how quickly they fix bugs. So now you can see that Ornery D uploaded yet another new version, and let's give that one a try and see if that fixes the problem. I assume it will. Let's quit that. Let's go reload the Pegasus Google Drive. I'd like to see it in this version instead to see. Yes, he updated a new one just a few minutes ago. Click Download. And I'm sorry, everyone, I don't know if I'm going to edit this out or leave it in. It's kind of interesting to see sort of how the development process works and how quickly things are updated, and that this is not a final release and there will be bugs in it. All right, back into the Applications folder with a newer version of the Pegasus UI. And let's see what we get this time. Yep, I really do want to open this. Hmm, that's not good. Well, as you can see from this Discord chat, he is actively working on Pegasus right now. And so the latest version is a little bit unstable, and it's not running on my Mac. So I downloaded the previous version, the 1.11 version, so that I could show you what it's like to install new firmware using Pegasus. So here's a slightly older version of Pegasus. I'm going to fire it up. My flight controller is connected, and it's in bootloader mode already. So I need to choose my target. I need to find Helio uh, somewhere in this list. Helio Spring, because that's what my flight controller is. And I'm going to choose the latest version of Butterflight. Tell it to erase the flash. And click Flash. And now it's going to update my firmware to the latest version. Cue the fast forward. All right, well, while that's updating, I'm also going to point out that Helio RC's website, which is where you should go to get support, if you click support, I can see now that they've got their Discord channel linked here. And you can click connect and join, and hopefully get all the support you need. Let's go back to Pegasus and see how it's doing. All right, it's downloading.
So what I believe that they're working on right at this moment is the Pegasus. So you'll have a drop down where you can choose whether you want race flight, butter flight, or beta flight. And you won't have to go download the latest hex files. It'll do it all for you. All right, now you can see I'm connected and my flight controller is working. Everything should be totally at the default. Um, if you want to get into the CLI, you can click this little keyboard icon down here. And I can type version and see that I am now running Butterflight version 3.6.2 with the latest IMUF code of 110. And hit escape to make that go away. And as soon as you exit the CLI, it looks like it reboots the flight controller. And now you have a freshly installed flight controller with the latest firmware, totally set to the defaults, and ready to go. And install your, your settings. So I think I'll leave that for a future video.